In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to find the approximate solution of system of linear equations using Jacobi method. So let's consider the general form of system of linear equations. Here these a's and b's are the known numbers and x are the unknown numbers which we need to find using this method. Now in order to apply this method, this system must satisfy three conditions. The first condition is that it should be a square system. It means that the number of equations should be equals to the number of unknowns. The second condition is that the leading diagonal entries in the coefficient matrix must be non-zero. The leading diagonal in the coefficient matrix is the diagonal from top left to the bottom right. The third condition is that the system must have a unique solution. If these three conditions are satisfied, then the system can be solved using Jacobi method. For example, we have a 3 by 3 square system. If we assume that this system has a unique solution and the leading diagonal entries A11, A22, A33, they are non-zero, then we can solve this using Jacobi method. Now the algorithm of this method says that we need to find the solution expression of the first variable x1 from first equation, solution expression of the second variable x2 from second equation, and solution expression of the third variable from third equation. Now the next step is on the left hand side variables superscript we will write i plus 1. On the right hand side variable superscript we will write i. This will create Jacobi iterative scheme. Now for i is equals to 0 we will get the solution expression for the first approximate solution. Here we can see that for i equals to 0, we get the solution expressions for the first approximate solution. On the right hand side, you can see that we require x10, x20 and x30, which is basically the initial solution. So we can substitute the initial solution to find the first approximate solution. For i equals to 1, we get the solution expression for the second approximate solution. On the right hand side you can see that we require x11, x21, x31 which is basically the first approximate solution which we just found using i is equals to 0. So to find the second approximate solution we need first approximate solution. Similarly the third approximate solution can be found using second approximate solution. We, we will continue this process until the two successive approximate solutions become same. Now let's consider an example and see how this algorithm works. Here we are given 3 by 3 square system. The leading diagonal entries are 5, 9, minus 7, which are clearly not equals to 0. Now, if you assume that this system has a unique solution, then you can find its approximate solution, solution using Jacobi method. Now, the algorithm says that we need to find the solution expression of x1 from first equation, x2 from second equation, and x3 from third equation. The next step is we will write on the left hand side variable superscript i plus 1. On the right hand side variable superscript we will write i. This will create Jacobi iterative scheme. For i is equals to 0 we will get the solution expressions for the first approximate solution. On the right hand side you can figure out that we need x10, x20 and x30 which is basically the initial solution. So if we assume that initial solution is equals to 0, 0, 0 then the first approximate solution can be computed as minus 0 0.200, 0 0.222, minus 0 0.429. Here I have written three decimal places. I have rounded off third, fourth decimal place into the thir uh, third decimal place. Now for i is equals to 1, we will get the solution expression for the second approximate solution. On the right hand side, you can see that we require x11, x21 and x31 which is basically the first approximate solution which we just found in the first iteration. So we'll use these three values here in this solution expression to compute the second approximate solution which is equals to minus 0 0.146, 0 0.203, minus 0 0.517. So we'll continue this process and I have obtained, I have obtained the approximate solutions up to the seventh approximation, up to the seventh iteration. You, you can notice that the value of x1 is approaching to 0 0.186, value of x2 is approaching to 0 0.331, value of x3 is approaching to minus 0 0.423. Moreover, you can notice that the values in the 6th and 7th iteration are same. So we can, we can stop this 
iteration process here and consider the sol uh, approximate solution obtained in the seventh iteration as our required approximate solution. We can also check whether the obtained approximate solution is the correct solution or not. What we have to do, we have to substitute these three values into the original equation and see whether left hand side is equal to right hand side. Here we can figure out that 5x1 minus 2x2 plus 3x3 is equals to minus 1.001 which is approximately equals to minus 1. Similarly, second and third equations are also satisfied. So we can say that the solution obtained here is the good approximate solution.